The story begins with a prisoner named Sergeant Lyndon Stiles, who has been sentenced to death and will soon be executed by injection with a lethal poison. He is accused of murdering 11 people. However, when the priest urges him to atone for his sins, the sergeant says that he has not killed anyone, and God knows that. Soon after, the sergeant is injected with poison. He prays until his last breath, and then closes his eyes. The doctor examines his body and declares him dead, but after some time, he regains consciousness in a locked room, wondering how he is still alive. A man tells him that since the sergeant was previously a military man, they give him the option of submitting himself for an important experiment. If he is not ready for it, they will carry out the punishment. If he survives this experiment, he will get a new name, a new place of residence, and a good amount of money. The sergeant has no knowledge of this medical experiment but still cannot refuse because the other option is death. After this, he is locked in a glass box under heavy security. Soon after, a female doctor called Ellen pays him a visit with the purpose of taking blood, skin, and hair samples for DNA analysis. The sergeant tries to joke with him, but the woman is very scared of him. She says that the sergeant has killed 11 people. The sergeant tries to convince her that he was a soldier. He killed more than 11 people. But he was just performing his duty, just like Ellen is doing now. The sergeant says that he has been framed for the brutal murder of 11 people because he refused to kill a foreigner. So he was expelled from the army and confined here. However, the doctor does not believe him because this is absolutely impossible in the United States. She also mentions that it won't change anything, whether he believes her or not. The sergeant asks Ellen about the medical experiment, but she says she has no knowledge of it. For now, she walks away with samples of his skin, hair and blood, and the sergeant is left alone with his Bible. The doctor is running a secret laboratory, where he shows Ellen the remains of an alien, and explains that they came here a year ago. The pilot detected their ship on radar but thought he was under attack. So, he fired a sidewinder, and their ship crashed. They want Ellen to identify the DNA, and make it as compatible as possible with the sergeant's DNA. The DNA is similar to human DNA. Although Ellen doubts it, apparently no one has done this before, and no one knows what effect it will have on the sergeant's body. The official says that such an experiment has already been done on a monkey, and he lived for about three weeks, so a human being can withstand this test. Ellen wants to tell the sergeant about this experiment, but then the general who was the sergeant's commander during the war, arrives there. It turned out that the sergeant had disobeyed his orders, and one of his last missions was made public. But the sergeant was convinced that the US Army was wrong in the assassination business, and that it was against the Army's policies. The general is angry, but he controls himself. When Ellen announces that he will be injected with DNA of extraterrestrial origin, he laughs because he does not believe in such things. But he is immediately convinced of the veracity of what is happening and asks Ellen what the chances are of his survival in this experiment. Ellen explains that the alien DNA is very similar to human DNA, so there is a strong possibility of its survival, but no one knows in what form. Ellen's words reassure the sergeant a bit, and he agrees to the experiment. The general orders the experiment to begin, and says goodbye to the sergeant. The sergeant is tied to a table and stripped of his clothes, but he keeps the Bible with him. He forgives Ellen for what she did to him before the injection, thinking he might not get the chance later. They begin to inject, and soon the sergeant begins to transform. He becomes horrifically disfigured. He suffers unbearable pain and constant nausea, but he endures all the tortures steadfastly by reading the Bible, thinking that they may change his body but cannot change his soul. He endured all the torture for a long time but now his pain has become unbearable. One day, when Ellen comes to check on him, he tells her to at least give him clothes, as he is still a human being, not a rat in a cage. Ellen assured him that there would be no more injections, and she also allowed her to wear clothes. During this, the sergeant repeats the same thing. He has not killed anyone, and he was not there at all. He shows his palms stained with blood, from which horns are now emerging. MRI scans show his brain is expanding, and his skull cannot longer contain it, so his pain is increasing. This could also lead to his death, because the same thing happened to the monkey on whom the experiment was done. Then suddenly the sergeant loses consciousness, the doctors run to him and inject him with adrenaline but no signs of life are seen. Even electrical stimulators do not help, and the doctor declares him dead. Suddenly the surgeon opens his eyes, but upon checking, no pulse is found. The surgeon takes Ellen's hand to her stomach, where her new heart is now beating. Ellen is very surprised, as he had grown a new heart. His pain has also lessened now, but he is afraid that he is changing. Ellen assures him that he has overcome tough times, and the future might not be as challenging for him. As time passes, the sergeant undergoes a transformation, 
which is not easy for him, but now he can do much more compared to others. He can handle pressure more easily, and his strength is five times greater than that of an average human. Additionally, his listening ability and vision have also become sharper. One day, he breaks out of his glass cage and runs away from the base. It turned out that this was the second phase of the experiment. The general gathered his troops and announced a hunt. Ellen is shocked because the generals let her escape on purpose so she could learn whether it was possible to capture and kill the aliens. Meanwhile, the sergeant goes out into the woods and sees his reflection in the river for the first time. He is sad, but as per the Bible lines, he again reminds himself that they can change his body but not his soul. At this time, the army comes into the forest and orders it to find and neutralize the enemy. The army begins to search for him, but he is completely hidden in the area, and he can make sounds that could unnerve one of the soldiers. He pulls a soldier up a tree and contacts the general using his walkie-talkie. He admits that he has figured out their plan, but he will not kill anyone, as he understands people better now than when he was a human himself. He leaves the soldier on the tree and goes away. Ellen suggests that they have nothing to gain by hunting the sergeant in this way. They can only learn how he would react under these circumstances. However, the general ignores him and leads the army himself to capture the sergeant. Suddenly they hear a strange sound. And when the soldiers move in to investigate, the sergeant captures the general. He wants the general to tell the army who he is and that he never murdered the 11 people. He was only framed by the army and the government. The general does just that. The sergeant throws a grenade into their midst, takes advantage of the commotion, and runs away. At night, while Ellen is in her tent, the sergeant arrives unexpectedly, but he does not harm her. Ellen is deeply ashamed of what she did to the sergeant. She says she would never have done it if she had known the purpose of the experiment, but the sergeant doesn't care. He wants Ellen to trust him and confess that he is innocent, and when Ellen admits that she trusts him, the sergeant leaves. Ellen chases after him and tells him that she is ready to help him get back to his human form. However, she doesn't know whether it will work or not, but she can try. The sergeant makes an appointment for the morning and leaves. The next day they meet at the designated location, and Ellen takes out the syringe, but her hands begin to tremble. Due to this, the sergeant realizes that there are 20 sharpshooters around him, and he is their target. Eventually, Ellen admitted that she was forced to do so. She also reveals that the sergeant can no longer turn back into a human, and there is no cure. The syringe contains a strong sedative so that the sergeant can be captured. The sergeant requests that the general let Ellen go in peace and that he not hurt anyone. The general reminds him that the experiment has ended and that he is lost. But the sergeant says that he won because he never became a murderer. The general orders the soldiers and takes him at gunpoint. The soldiers are preparing to shoot the sergeant, but suddenly a loud noise is heard and aliens who look like the sergeant appear. They neutralize the soldiers and also look at them with hatred. One of the aliens goes straight to the sergeant and stops in front of him. He looks into his eyes for a long time and then places his hand on his shoulder, and then the couple disappears. The rest of the aliens also disappear, leaving people stunned. Ellen realizes that they were being tested by the aliens all along. They placed the bodies of dead aliens in the ship and deliberately crashed it to find out how humans would react to their presence, and humanity did not pass this test.